All right, Twitter is rolling out super follow subscriptions, uh, and they just went live a couple days ago. So uh, I want to talk a little bit about this because this is an interesting thing, and I kind of want to... I don't know, I kind of want to discuss where I think this is ultimately going for Twitter. So the way I think of Twitter super follows, and for those who don't know, is you basically click on the button and you can like pay some type of fee to the creator of the tweets to get like exclusive types of tweets. Um, so I mean, like if I like a journalist, for example, and I, you know, keep up with their content every day and I really want to get more of their content, then I can give them a super follow to kind of show them my support of how much I enjoy their content and potentially get access to some other uh, unique features that I get as a result of super following them, which probably is exclusive content. Uh, it's a really interesting concept. Now, Twitter historically has had a problem with monetizing. Uh, I've been using Twitter over the past three months uh, religiously, uh, and I didn't used to use Twitter sort of, I used Twitter back when I was in high school. Like that's when my friends were on it. It was interesting. Then I stopped using it in college almost completely. I don't even remember when I like checked it. And now as I've started a startup, uh, to the startup tech world on Twitter, the content is, that's a video for another day. The content is very interesting. I mean, a lot of it is helpful, but a lot of it is also just like self aggrandizing and stuff. Sometimes it's not the best for your mental health. But the point is, it makes a lot of connections, right? So like the other day I responded to some investor who was talking about audio startups and I'm building an audio startup and like we got on a phone call because of that tweet and then he connected me with another investor. So like these types of things don't happen outside of like sending some type of email introduction and then allowing that to facilitate a relationship. But on Twitter, it's like quick, right? It's like the vibe of the person you catch in terms of the response. You only got 280 characters to really say something meaningful. And then boom, you move on and like you can actually, you know, start facilitating progress and movement. And Twitter as a company has likely created probably trillions of dollars of wealth just in terms of like investors who found out about certain companies because of different tweets and then source them. And then that company goes public, you know, like, so these things are really, really powerful, but they've always had a problem monetizing it. And I think the reason they've had a problem monetizing Twitter is because when you look at something like Facebook, that's worth a trillion and Twitter, that's worth Let's see how much Twitter is worth right now. I think Twitter is not worth more than a hundred billion, and I might be wrong about that. Let's check this right now. Twitter's market cap is, yeah, Twitter's market cap is fifty-one billion, and Facebook's is over a trillion, right? So that that really shows you the disparity in terms of Twitter giving access to, I think, a whole host of connections that are fundamentally different and more meaningful than what Facebook does. Um, but the ad targeting on Twitter is just not that good, right? And it's not that it's not good. It's that like if you're an advertiser and you have to target people to buy like water bottles, like are you going to use Facebook's data or Twitter's data? And also the quality of the scroll is super important, right? When you're scrolling through Twitter, it's very quick, very fast. And like you're getting these like bite-sized pieces of information. When you're scrolling on Facebook, it's more of a like, complicated scroll, right? Because you have your friends and family posting on Twitter. I mean, maybe you have friends and family, but likely not family, maybe some friends. Most likely you're in a certain type of Twitter. Are you in hip-hop Twitter? Are you in tech Twitter? Are you in business Twitter? Are you in, I don't know, uh, sort of social justice Twitter, activism Twitter? So there's all these different facets of Twitter that you're in, which means you're constantly being introduced via retweets and other pieces of content that people post that inevitably go viral, which is the whole point of Twitter, which means you're discovering new creators kind of constantly on Twitter uh, and seeing sort of the replies and how people are interacting in those replies. On Facebook, you're actually seeing your family, right? So when I'm scrolling and I see an ad for a water bottle, which I'm already interested in because Facebook knows everything about me, um, behind my you know mom's birthday celebration photo recap, like it's just more of a meaningful form of engagement when I actually go to click on that ad or check out what that ad's about. So obviously the advertising is just phenomenally better. So super follows is a way to try to make Twitter more easy to monetize. And the problem I have with it is to me, it seems like a glorified short version of a newsletter. And that works at scale on an advertising model. But from a subscription perspective, it's like I personally don't think I would ever subscribe and super follow someone on Twitter for exclusive tweets or to show them my appreciation. Maybe the appreciation thing, but I'd rather just like support some other project they're doing versus like Twitter, like maybe a Patreon or something, I don't know. But a Twitter thing is like weird. It's like, I, it's like your tweets are so special to me. Your 280 characters every day are so special to me that I don't wanna reward you with a couple bucks to get 
more exclusive ones. It's like, that's weird. It's like, what would really make sense is a newsletter, right? It's like, you're going to be producing content. I want to support your content. Maybe I don't always read your newsletter, but I'll give you two, three bucks a month to show you my support and help you create a living off what you're doing. Um, and that content is more long lasting. It's not like I have to see it one day and then it's gone. It's more like I can read the newsletter later, right? So like, to me, this is their attempt at a mini version of Substack uh, without the sort of glorification of an actual newsletter and actual content, but rather in these short form type of tweets and exclusive stuff. Now, personally, I'm not super bullish on how this is going to monetize well, because I think you have to have, you know, millions of creators like Substack does and like Patreon does that are producing high quality type of content that have people willing to patronize that stuff. Um, I think I used that word in the right way. I know there's multiple definitions, but willing to actually be patrons, right, for that for that content and actually pay for it. From a super follows perspective, I, I don't know. I just don't see that happening. Like that's the that's a really weird way way to to think of how Twitter monetizes. Now, granted, I think Twitter can easily monetize by charging a ten dollar per month subscription and getting rid of ads. However, um, you're going to see it's it's complicated because if you like the people who have the money to pay those ten dollars a month um, to to get rid of ads they are likely the ones who would also be the most likely to purchase something off of an ad. So if you have a bunch of people on Twitter that don't pay for ads uh, and the advertising will still exist for the people who do pay for ads, but the ads aren't as effective because now those people aren't converting that well, then the advertising model gets a little weird at that point. Like you kind of need the good amount of people in terms of income uh, prosperity to be able to see those ads. Uh, in order for those ads to be effective. But the thing is, if the average revenue per ad for everyone already is so much below something like $10 or $12, then maybe that makes up for it. Now, why do I think $10 or $12 works here versus on Facebook? Facebook is your family and friends, right? Like you're, you're not gonna pay 10 bucks to get rid of ads to scroll a couple times a day to see what your family and friends are doing. Like it's not a platform to me that creators are leveraging to literally uh, get to the next stepping stone. Twitter is, right? Like if you're a musician and someone, you can literally search up the tweet, uh, need new song recs, and just tweet at everyone who's talking about a, a new song and, and send them your link, right? And immediately you've captured like some form of engagement uh, and now you're like on the path to, to, to building a following in music. And, and Twitter is like direct immediate updates. Twitter to me is so much more business friendly and opportunistically friendly. Um, that I think it's worth paying an actual subscription for. So those are my thoughts on Twitter. I think it can monetize with real subscriptions. The super follows thing is a little bit weird. Uh, Twitter, give people the edit button because that's what they really want. So if all this just results in a Twitter edit button, I think that'll be uh, that'll be the best thing that happens out of this.